Hello everyone, welcome to Passive House Open Day 2020. My name's Carlos, and this is my certified Passive House Plus, and we are in beautiful, sunny North Beach, Western Australia. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Brian here from iSmart. Um, I'm here a couple of years after uh, project completion with Carla Sakuna from uh, Certified Passive House Plus in North Beach. And we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about uh, how the house is performing, what our temperatures are like, uh, ambient, energy use, all that kind of stuff. So, um, Carlos is here, he's been kind enough to sit with us for a couple hours today, and yeah, hopefully we can give you guys something to listen to. So, Carlos, I guess we could start off with um, your journey. Um, we've never actually discussed your journey in detail. So, yeah. how did you end up down the rabbit hole that is Passive House? So, so uh, Brian, we moved here in 2011 from North America. I think one of the first things that impacted us was um, despite being in a, in a temperate climate, sort of Mediterranean, Southern California climate, the houses were terribly cold here. 2018, we set off to, to build our home. We were interested in, in building a home that would operate comfortably all year round. Mm -hmm. And early on, what we discovered is that there was a lot of knowledge around thermal mass, there's a lot of knowledge around solar passive design, but what, what I would call first principles, which I brought with me from North America, around insulation, you know, the right levels of insulation or air tightness, there just wasn't much knowledge. I'd seen you guys at a, um, a Perth home show, oh, but yes. initially, back then, my understanding was that passive house was just too expensive for us to, to actually to actually build. But by elimination, once no one else could provide a solution, uh, we talked with, with one of your, your guys one day and he said, well, give us a chance to at least put a proposal together and surprisingly, you came in within our budget. So at that very, like when you were in the concept stage and you were looking for buildings, et cetera, and when you happened on us and we had a couple of chats or whatever, what was your understanding of Passive House at that time? Like, did you have a full understanding of it or were you just, you know, halfway down the rabbit hole and learning as you went? No, I, I did not have a full understanding. If anything, it was, in, in my mind at the time, an extreme, you know, version of energy efficiency, you know, with very tight air tightness standards. You know, I would have been happy with a North American, you know, three air exchanges per hour. My general understanding was that we had the right level of insulation in the wall, that there was air tightness, so we didn't have infiltration. And I knew that because the air exchanges were below three, we needed, um, a heat ventilation, you know, a heat, recovery, uh, heat recovery ventilation unit, HRV yeah. unit. It was, I think, minimal understanding. I was just happy with the, with the insulation and the air tightness. And you had no misconceptions or anything, or you weren't afraid about timber frame at all. Coming from America, it's no. Expensive. Coming from America, we had no issues with timber frame. We were, in fact, going into this build process, we're completely open to any material. We could have built this house with bricks, with stones, with, it was really an economic decision. So uh, ultimately this home could have been built out of bricks, but it was far more economical to build it out of timber. The build times, you know, we, uh, from, from concrete pour to us moving in was about a nine month, eight to nine month period. Mm -hmm. And we could have never achieved that with bricks. You know, we were leasing at the time. So all that money that we saved on our lease got poured back into the house too. So yeah. it was just a win-win, however you, you know, whatever way you look at it. Yeah. We, we would have paid another six to eight to 12 months uh, of lease on, on using any other typical yeah. build here in, in WA. Okay, so um, we'll just touch briefly on the build process. We won't go into too much detail, but during the build process, we had several meetings on site. And we went through a lot of detailing and HRV installation and services and insulation, all that kind of stuff. Was all that, was this stuff that was going over your head or you understood it or it made sense? No, I mean, so, so you know, I'm a civil engineer, so I really enjoyed all these details. I conceptually understood what you were doing. I understand you've recently taken the course for Certified Pass House Designer. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so just finished the, uh, the course for Passive House Designer. So I have to take the test <laughs> at the end of the year. But uh, that was a real eye opener because I say I had a general knowledge of insulation, air tightness and uh, double glazing and, and mechanical ventilation. But um, I, I, it, the complexity of passive house design really, re, I really fi finally un understood the, how m much more complex than I imagined yeah. this was. The placing of windows, whether it's proud or it's in the center or in the back and the thermal bridging effects of the different positioning as well as thermal bridging calculations. Wow, I mean, it's, uh, 
a lot more complex than I <laughs> ever imagined it. To the point where, you know, I'm wondering, actually, how did my house get designed? Or, you know, yeah. what are the specific details of, you know, the HRV and all that? So, yeah. yeah. So in your particular case, um, when we signed or when we started this build process, you had signed up, not necessarily for a certified passive house, but for a passive house built to, pass, to passive standards. We did in the backgrounds that you guys, I don't think, were aware of to get it to that certification. Yes. So while you understand now what all this stuff with, um, especially doing the passive house designer course, there's a lot more work in the forward stages than at the end. Yes, and it's a it's a, an enormous engineering feat. I think these uh, these passive houses. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So on that note, you've been in here for near on two years, close enough to yep. two, probably a year and ten months odd, roughly. Yeah. Um, tell us all about it. How is it? So it's it's interesting. I, I I gauge this by my family's comfort. In fact, having lived in a, in just a typical WA home, which got quite cold uh, in the winters, when we moved into this house, the first winter, uh, no one really complained much about the temperature. You know, everybody felt that it was quite comfortable. Um, in the summers, you know, we we keep the house at around 23 degrees, and and the the aircon runs at low fan speed pretty much throughout the summer and and keeps that house very comfortable. But this second winter, the temperature uh, drops down to about 18 degrees. That is the lowest temperature we had in this house without any heat, uh, without any aircon heat oh, being turned on. Source, yeah. It's basically solar passive uh, heat gain during the day and any cooking heat at night. And basically within a 24 hour period, the lowest temperature would get to 18 degrees, which is quite fantastic, actually. Yeah. And in the summer, with very, very little air con, as I say, running on low, we maintain this house at a very comfortable 23 degrees all summer long. Before we, we engage with you, when I, once I had my, my, uh, my uh, plans done, I started sending out to subcontractors just to build my own budget of how much I, the house was gonna cost. And we sent it out to an air con supplier and they came back with you know standard 90 watts per square meter. I think in this house meant like 25 kilowatts of air conditioning power. In the end, this house ended up with five kilowatts. Yeah. And even at five kilowatts, it never jumps into medium or high fan speed. It's always on low, which yeah. which means it's running at that at that very high coefficient of performance, which yes. which you achieve at at, yeah. at a low level, not at a high level. Just fantastic how how it operates. And now you know we've we've put in power meters into our switchboard for the AC circuits because at, at, up until now this first year and a half we've only we've been measuring total household consumption yep. and we have a, a clothes dryer for example which yeah. nobody uses around here so we and of course we have induction um, stoves now which consume a lot of uh, electricity which we run off of our at least part of the day off of our solar we're trying to identify how much uh, energy we're using to to cool and heat the home. So yeah. we put in power meters for the for the two AC circuits and within another year, you know, we'll have some good data to share. So just touching on the PV again, when you were talking about maintaining that temperature during the summer, because we know we get like long hot periods during the summer in Perth in this particular climate um, and we don't cool down at night. And that's why we get so much overheating in, in that block. It's probably about a month during the summer, but in, in reality, it's probably three weeks of intensity, um, maybe four. Um, the aircon actually runs during the day and it's directly used through because we know it's a passive house plus therefore it's got pv we know that so what size is your system your pv system so the pv system um we have a, a five kilowatt inverter mm -hmm. which is the maximum you can put in a single phase and we upsized our uh, our solar panels to about six kilowatts or so so that, that peak peak load, you know, extends earlier in the day and later into the day. Okay. So that's, yeah, it's about 6.2, I think, kilowatts of solar panels and five kilowatts of, of inverter. My wife and I, my wife works part-time, I work full-time. It's, it's what happens with a lot of solar uh, producers that um, we're producing, our peak production comes at a time where we're not consuming Correct. at peak. Yeah. So most of your consumption starts at, you know, after 6 p.m. when the, your solar yeah. is going down. I've been using the uh, this Renew tool called Sunulator, which oh, yes. is a um, a tool for for solar um, panel design and, and batteries. And because the the consumption profile in this house is is so different to your typical say WA home because of the lower consumption around aircon and stuff, it turns out that batteries become feasible much sooner in this home because of the consumption profile yeah. than in your typical. 
W A, you know, yeah. home. Yeah, some calculations I, I just I just ran is that um, I'm on, a, on a 10 kilowatt battery system, I'm getting a a, a positive payout within the next within 10 years. I, I break even. Ah. So again, you've been in the house for a little under two years. Um, is there any byproducts of passive house that you've experienced from living in the house? After after living for about eight years in in, in your typical build, and, and and over these for the first eight years, you know, we lived in. Older homes built in the 70s, all the way through newer homes built over the last five years. So, you know, we, we were able to experience good spectrum, a, a, yeah. a good spectrum. Um, one thing you notice when you get back into uh, homes with double glazing is how quiet they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, this home, of course, is, uh, is in a rear block, so it's even quieter. The second thing is um, myself and a, f a few others in our house have, uh, have airborne allergies we suffer from, like pollen, and all this. In, in the last two years, I've had no significant um, allergy episodes, which usually in spring, around this time of the year, I start getting, you know, sniffles and, you know, um, um, uh, the, the, those kind of spring allergies are typical, you know, I just haven't experienced it. And I, it okay. could very pot well potentially be, you know, the, the filtration system. So overall, uh, with your journey and the home, and you've been living in it for two years, um, if you were to give a message to anyone out there regarding passive house. So overall, having lived in a passive house, I don't know how I could have lived in a non-passive house all this time. <laughs> and it would be difficult to imagine us leaving this house and not wanting to move into another passive home. I, I guess that the biggest measure, we would do this all over again. If we, if we had a chance to do it all over again, we would do it all over again. You know, we would definitely go and we'd probably jump into this passive house a lot sooner than we went around in a lot of circles trying to find the solution um, that Passive House offered uh, because of the misunderstanding that we thought Passive House was just too expensive for us. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much for today, Carlos. <laughs> I really Pleasure. appreciate it. And uh, I hope you have many more happy and healthy years <laughs> in your home. Thanks.